WMAL. Now, Washington Mornings on the Mall. At AM 630. WMAL. 707 on WMAL. That's a peppy little tune there, Mike. I like that. Peppy yeah. little tune. 707 on WMAL, where Washington comes to talk. It's Brian Wilson. Filling in today for Mr. Neiman, who's still on parental leave, is our good friend Rob Carson. How are you, Rob? I am excellent. Couldn't be better for getting up at 2.30 in the morning. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's, a, that's a difficult thing. Yeah, hey, uh, we're, we're joined now on the phone line by Liz Cheney. Uh, she was a former State Department official, and of course, she is the uh, elder daughter of Vice President of the United States, Dick Cheney, Lynn Cheney. Uh, also is involved in a group called Keep America Safe and does some political analysis for Fox News. Very busy woman you are, Liz Cheney. How are you today? I'm great. How are you guys? Thank you for having me on. We're tickled to have you on. Uh, first of all, how's your dad doing? Because last time I saw him, he looked great. You know, it's just uh, it's miraculous. It really is. He's doing so well, and um, I just try to remind people every chance I get that uh, if you're not an organ donor, please become one. It's so important. Yeah. And uh uh, we just feel really blessed beyond words um, that this gift of life he's received. So it's it's a very, very special. Well, we're, we're glad to see him doing so much better. Uh, I want to talk about foreign policy right now. And, and specifically the attacks against our embassies, the protests at our embassies. Why do you think that's not getting a lot of attention? Because there have been some very interesting reporting that suggests that perhaps security was not all that it should have been in the days before the anniversary of 9-11. Yeah, I mean, I, I suspect we will hear much more about this. I think that if you look at um, what had gone on uh, in the previous months, particularly in Benghazi, uh, in terms of a previous attack on the consulate, an attack on a, a motorcade, an attack on the motorcade of the ambassador from the U.K., um, you know, clearly we were on notice this was a very dangerous place. Um, I think that obviously they, they did not have the security in place that they should have. And, you know, I think that, uh, a real disservice was done, frankly, to the American people last Sunday when the U.N. ambassador, Susan Rice, went on the air and um, declared with certitude that all of these protests were sparked by a film. <laughs> now, there's no way at a minimum that she could have known that with such certainty so soon after the protest before any investigation had been complete. And, in fact, the evidence that we've now seen in terms of, you know, mortar rounds fired into the consulate, RPGs, um, the four-hour firefight, apparently, you know, that all points to much, much more pre-planning, and and there are now reports of Al Qaeda involvement in the attacks. So, yeah. I think it's it's a serious situation, and and it certainly deserves uh, every attention and focus we can give it. Well, you know, it, the, the the mainstream media though can only take on one topic at a time, and yeah. right now they're busy with that Mitt Romney tape. Uh, on another point about that that whole thing though, during the protest against the embassy in Cairo. Uh, there were some statements that were issued by uh, officials there in Cairo that uh, were, uh, you know, criticized by Mitt Romney, and he got a lot of flack for doing that, but also disavowed by the White House. And, and as a person who worked at the State Department, when a statement comes out from the embassy, it is generally viewed as the official policy of the United States, is it not? Well, exactly. You know, and in this day and age when you've got so many forms of communication, you know, you've, the, the embassy also is on Twitter, they're sending email alerts out. This was an official statement. And so, you know, I don't know if anybody in Washington had approved the statement, um, but certainly it, it was not the right approach. It tells you something about the mindset. Frankly, I think that starts at the top, this notion that, you know, the first approach here ought to be we're going to apologize for people who have uh, hurt Muslim religious feelings, I believe were the words in the statement. Um, and I think, again, you know, I would fault the president directly for the fact that the next day when he went into the Rose Garden to condemn those who had killed our ambassador in Libya, he failed even to mention the attack on the embassy. I mean, we had our wall scaled, we had the flag torn down and burned, uh, and our Qaeda flag hung over the embassy, and the president didn't even mention it. Um, and I don't know if he has to this day mentioned it, condemned it. And I think that sends such a, a bad signal to radicals around the world. You know, go ahead and attack an embassy, and, and President Obama is not going to say anything about it. I, I, Liz, this is uh, Rob Carson. 
it's clear to me that the class of 1968 is in charge of foreign policy right now. Uh, what is, uh, this Blue Mountain Security, a British firm, um, was hired by, uh, uh, by our State Department, and they had to abide by a no bullets rule that was signed by Hillary Clinton. Is this going to explode in the media, or is it just going to go away? Because to me, we've not only done a disservice, we, le- we left our ambassador and, and uh, his staff completely uh, unprotected. Yeah, no, that's right, we did. And I think that, um, you know, we're going to hear a lot more of the details about exactly what the uh, security situation was, who made decisions about how much security there should be at the embassies. You know, I would also remind people we're we're facing these devastating defense cuts. This sequestration is coming, which is going to be devastating for folks, you know, all across Virginia in, in your listening area. Um, but in that money, there's over $120 million for embassy security. And the President of the United States has said he's going to veto any attempt to reverse that sequestration. Um, I think he, he wants to see the sequestration happen. Secretary of Defense has said it, it will be a disaster, those were his words, um, to our national defenses. But the President seems uh, unconcerned about that. And, uh, you know, one one part of that massive amount of money we're going to see cut out of our defenses is, is for embassy security. The uh, the folks in Israel very concerned, of course, what's going on with Iran, the developing of nuclear weapons, uh, and the president had the opportunity to meet with Benjamin Netanyahu uh, just yesterday when he was in New York, but chose to instead go and, and spend time with uh, Beyonce yeah. and Jay-Z and appear on the Letterman show. Your thoughts? Yeah. Well, I mean... It, it, I'm sort of speechless about that. You know, at, at the same time that uh, the president is, uh, you know, the day after the embassy bombings, uh, he is, uh, after the embassy attacks, you know, he's in Las Vegas at a fundraiser. Um, he also, I would note, seems to, according to reports, have offered to meet with President Morsi, the Muslim brother to President of Egypt. Um, and, you know, this is the, the man who refused initially to even condemn the attack that occurred against the embassy in his country, who clearly looked the other way for that attack when it was occurring and do anything to prevent it or stop it. Um, you know, I think that it tells you about this president's priorities. And this is all going on, everything we're seeing on our TV screen, against the backdrop of uh, Iran working day in and day out to develop a nuclear weapon. And once again, the administration has been completely unable uh, or unwilling to do what's necessary to stop that process and, in fact, instead have leaked, apparently, to the press the most important program, one of the most effective programs we had targeted in that direction. All right. Well, Liz Cheney, it's a great pleasure to have you on.